Okay, uh, thank you very much for the invitation uh, that I made a talk here about the topic um, Open Science in the Web 2.0 and uh, thank you for the, the introduction. I have almost understood almost nothing <laughs> because I do not speak Portuguese. So I will talk in English. I, I have to excuse for my bad English, perhaps, but uh, believe me, my Portuguese is much worse. So I will talk English and I, I have to, to talk slowly because I, I have to think about how to say it in English. So perhaps you can follow because I, I will talk uh, very soon. Okay. Now. Yeah, the, the uh, theme of my of my presentation is open science in the web uh, 2.0 or building learning networks with weblog, wikis, and Twitter. This slide has been translated by Markus Janina, but it is the only slide which is translated. But um, okay, yeah, we have to switch to English now. Um, perhaps. At first, I will tell you something about what Web 2.0 means. Um, in, in the old days, internet, uh, yeah, in the internet only a few people produce content and many people read. So many people read but didn't write. They could not add content to websites, they, they just consumed the websites that <coughs> few people were presenting. Now with Web 2.0, this changes people getting more and more contributing content to websites, adding content to websites, collaboratively creating products in the web. One example is Facebook. I think you know Facebook where people can connect and they, they cannot just read, they can also write. They can put text on their web page, they can add images, they can upload videos, whatever. So Facebook is a web 2.0 application. Another example is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an online encyclopedia which has collaboratively been created. So many people working on this text, creating an online encyclopedia. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, if you know that, but um, here you have the edit button. Okay, if you're on the page of Wikipedia, here's the edit button. If you click on that edit button, you will get the editor. So you can just change the text. This is web 2.0. You can just change the text of the website to see. You can add content, you can comment, you can ask questions, whatever. Okay, this is one example. Wikipedia is a wiki, and a wiki is a text system where people collaboratively create texts, hypertexts. Now, um, I will give you another example, and I will therefore explain the situation in this room. So, you see, this is my presentation. Yeah? Presentation, my presentation. Okay. I am presenting here, and you see, here's a video camera. Here's a video camera, which is connected to the internet, and the camera streams the video of this talk directly to the internet. So people somewhere in the world are sitting now in front of their computers and watching the talk. Okay? Um, almost in Germany, because my friends sitting in Germany and I told them watch this talk. Okay, now this is much web, uh, yeah, web in the first version because people can just watch, but they can also interact. You see here the, the, the second presentation and people can now add comments on this presentation using Twitter. Twitter is a system 
where people can produce short messages and put it into the web. Messages may contain 140 characters, very short messages, not very long, and they put it into the web. Like short messages with a mobile phone, but um, not just sending to one person, but putting it in the web and everyone can, can see it. So, here, on, on this page, and Side, you can see the comments of people. The comments of people just um, watching and twittering. And this is called Twitter Back Channel, and I walk here to, to read some of them. So, um, some of the people uh, sitting here, Stefan Schröder, for example, and Anja Lawrence, I know them from, uh, from different contexts in Germany. They, they say that um, the, the stream is frozen, so we have a little problem here with the stream. Okay, something is frozen and it must be restarted. And the people say, okay, it, um, it happens sometimes, but we have to, to um, yeah, it, it, it is, we cannot change it. Okay, here Stefan Schulter says, here, hi to Maputo. And Jutta Dierberg says Christian should come closer to the web micro, okay, because uh, there seems to be some problem with the tone. And at this point I have to say thank you to the people from the computer science department which helped me over three or four hours to create the scenario here and I'm very happy that it works, okay? So there are some problems, but smaller problems I think. Okay, ah, now it works properly. Fine to see and hear, says Stefan Schulte. So, it's a comment from Stefan Schulte. So, perhaps um, we can now read, or you can read the comments that people are twittering while they watch the stream over over internet. Okay? So, but we can also comment to them, send comments to them by yeah, twittering, and I will do that now. I will now send them a message. And I add, all messages are shown which contain this word, um, O S Maputo. I will, I will show you. So, um, I will write, um, hello, what should I write, hello from Maputo. Who is listening out there? Please say hello. Okay. And now I add the word OS Open Science Maputo. Okay. Now I treat that. Okay, and now it will take a few seconds to be there, okay? And so I hope some people will add comments watching outside. So this is an example for uh, open science, if you, so, if you, if you want. Um, this presentation is a scientific presentation, streamed to the outside, people watching and commenting. Ah, okay, now, it's, yeah. now we are waiting for the comments. Okay, now some words about my context. This is very important to know because you can then understand the examples I will give you afterwards. I work in the field of mathematics education and computer science education. So I am working in the field of yeah, teaching students, student teachers. Um, so people who will be teachers in the future. I, I, I teach in mathematics, computer science, and education. And I'm very interested in e-learning, computer sport learning. So this is the field I am working in. So at first I want to say something about science and society. So this is society, okay? Some people in society. 
So what is the image society has about science? And it is often this image. People sitting in the ivory tower yeah, thinking about problems which are irrelevant to reality. Academic problems, working on academic problems yeah, which have no relation to reality. So this is perhaps a little bit exaggerated, but it is often the image in society about science. Example from my context, teachers working in schools often think that scientists working in the field of education do things which are irrelevant to learning in schools, learning and teaching in schools. They think, what are the people doing at university? It has nothing to do with the work, the daily work in schools. And the scientists think, oh, the teacher, they are, they, are, they don't want to learn new things, they don't integrate new results from science. And so there is a gap between science and society. And not only between science and society, it is, only, it is also between scientists working in different fields. Okay? For example, um, mathematicians and people working in the field of history. Okay? They often do not understand each other because they have their own languages and their own concepts and it's hard to bring them together. But not only different disciplines, also two sub-disciplines of the same discipline. Think of mathematicians. There are groups of 10 or 20 mathematicians working on a special topic and other mathematicians also working on special topics, they don't understand them because they have their own grid, their own language in their specialized field of mathematics. Okay, so now how to bridge that gap? One yeah, possibility to do that is to transfer scientific knowledge into society. And there are some examples, for example, popular science literature. Yeah? You know, the books sold um, in libraries uh, where, on bookstores, where science is explained very easily in, um, yeah, in popular science literature. So, scientists try to explain what they do in very simple words that society can understand what they are doing. TV shows, there are many TV shows in Germany about science. I don't know if it was a bit the same, TV shows about science. Uh, are there? Hmm? No? We do have that. Okay, very few, okay, but there are TV shows about science explaining some scientific, some phenomena, phenomena scientifically to, um, to, to the science. Special courses for others, museums are one form of open science of, of transferring scientific knowledge and children's university lectures given to children. So this is perhaps what we call open science in the first version. Because only a few people are producing, thank you, only a few people are producing and many are reading and watching. Science, uh, society is not participating in that process, adding information or anything like this. They just listen and understand. A second thing people think about when, when open science is talked about is open access. What, what does open access mean? Scientists put their results into the web. For example, they um, put data, publications, or materials online 
So they don't write articles and, and publish in journals. You have to buy it. They put it in the web and everyone can read it. So society and other scientists have access to that products. Um, perhaps you know, um, this is very, very popular, in, for example, in biology. Perhaps you know the human genome approach. Scientists decoding the human genome and putting the data into the web. So the data of the human genome is now in the web and can be used by, for example, other scientists and society. And you know, society pays the scientists. So they have to know, what, or they should know, what the scientists are doing. And they can see it and control it if the results are put to the web. So this is, in my, in my opinion, something between first version and second version. Because, um, okay, it is much more attractive than just telling, because scientists here can use the data and the materials other scientists have produced. But, yeah, publications, are, yeah, they, they, they are just put in the web and others can read it. So this is, again, a few people publishing and many people reading. These two forms, Transferring scientific knowledge into society and open access are product oriented forms of open science because products are delivered to some community. In my vision, we should change the mode of knowledge production. We should try to include society into the production of new knowledge. Not just telling them what we have found, but including them into the mode of, into the production of scientific knowledge. This has been described by Gibbons and uh, others. They, they say the old way of doing science was mode one. Mode one is a mode which is very academic. They, they work on academic problems, not on yeah, problems in reality. It's disciplinary, what exactly that would have shown to you, hierarchical and conservative. You have an institute with a professor at the top, an institute with people uh, that the um, colleagues have to know what the professor says, and it's yeah, hierarchical. They describe also more two which is um, yeah, much more application-oriented and team-oriented. In mode 2, people, scientists and non-scientists in the field work together to solve reality problems, problems in reality, and the scientific scientists participate by adding their scientific knowledge or scientific methods and the others participating in adding their experience they have made in reality working in that field, for example. This is transdisciplinary because real problems, problems in reality, often are not related only to one science discipline. They are related to many disciplines. And it's anti hierarchical because we are working in networks. And this means um, you create learning networks with people outside science. Scientists and non-scientists create learning networks. Why learning networks? Because all people participating in such a project have much to learn. The non-scientists from the scientists and vice versa. So, I um, just have a look at the Twitter wall. Okay, now again, no sound from the picture. Uh, could you perhaps just restart the presentation? Okay, every time the presentation is restarted, uh, some advertisement is shown to the people outside. Okay, but we can, uh, cannot change that. Thank you very much. So, the vision is mode 2, process. Process-oriented open science, scientists and non-scientists collaborating in research projects. 
Okay, now before I examples, I want to say something about research and teaching. Okay, science is research as well as teaching. But many, yeah, many people think research and teaching are not related to each other, but this is wrong. Yeah. Research, and have, research and teaching have to be related. And one, one thing uh, people think about when research and teaching are combined is that at universities, teachers should teach the latest research results. Okay, this is obvious. We should not teach old things, we should teach the latest research results. But this is not um, a, a popular German educator Humboldt. He, he often uh, talk, uh, talked about research and teaching together, and this is not what he meant. He meant by combining research and teaching that students participate in research projects. So this is some form of inquiry learning. Not only teaching the students the results, this is the, the, the first version of teaching, <laughs> so, as well, but let them participate in some research projects. Okay, and in the field of education, this is why my context is so important, it's the same context you have, um, it is possible to make my own teaching be a research object. So I do research on my own teaching, which is some type of action research. Okay? I try to improve my teaching, I, I need some ideas from theory, I act, I try it, and afterwards I reflect. And there students can also participate, because they should reflect on my lectures, on my talks, they should reflect on their own learning, learning on my teaching, and add information to that actual research process. And in this processes, I would say it would be good to let society participate. So now, you may ask, who is society? Is society uh, many people? So this depends on the context. If you know, take the context of education, society may be teachers outside working in schools or teacher students of my, my university, of other universities somewhere in the world. Other scientists working in related fields, for example, education, computer science, mathematics, um, psychology, yeah? So we have a problem right here. Hmm? We have a problem. Problem? Yes. Ah, the server. But now it's connected. Okay. Just for Thank you. Okay. This microphone is better. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Scientists of um, different research fields, trainers, for example, people who work with, who have a different view on learning because they are working in companies, training people on the job. Coaches also have a different perspective on learning. Friends, personal friends, I know from private contexts, and so on. You perhaps. Okay? So having many people participating in those research processes. Okay, now I want to give you an example, but before I do that, I will give uh, a task to the people outside. So perhaps the stream is not working well, but uh, I give them something to do. Um, what is your opinion? Is open science Um, yeah, how to say? Is open science relevant for Mozambique? Okay. 
and why or why not. Okay, and let's see what the people outside are saying. when you have a lecture, students sitting there writing and at some point they, they, they miss the point, I don't understand the teacher. Okay? And from that point on they are just writing, do not understand anything and try to recapitulate all those things at home. They have to, to read that at home and try to understand that at home. So, a colleague of mine, Michael Bieding, he tried to record his, um, his lectures on YouTube, and I did it as well. I recorded all my lectures and put it on YouTube. So, my plan was that students can, after the lecture, have a look again into the lecture if they, have, if they did not understand something. Okay? They can, uh, uh, have a look on YouTube, just stop the professor and rewind the professor and pause the professor. And they can look at it as often as they want. Okay. So now I had those lectures in the web. And uh, then I thought about that and I thought, why should I have to give the lectures again next semester? Because all the lectures are in the web. So my idea was to let the students watch the lectures in advance, in preparation to the lecture. So I say, please, to next week, watch this video and this video and this video, and during the lecture, oh, this is no lecture, we are talking about this. I give you problems, we are talking about problems, we are talking about the videos, but the input is coming from the videos. And so this is one, one form of open science, putting lectures into the web, okay? But here people are not participating. One thing is I, I reflected about my web blog. What is a web blog? A web blog is a tool in the web, something like a diary where people add you know, texts like in a diary chronologically ordered. So the latest text, the latest article is at top. So I have a web blog and I write about my thoughts in science and teaching and I reflected about that idea in my web blog to, to give the videos in advance and let students work in the lecture. Okay, and a web blog is not only for publication but also people can comment there. And you see here, there came 52 answers from people outside just adding their ideas. Okay? So, this, these are people from my learning network, and they, they just added ideas, they commented on that, they criticized that, they hardly criticized that. And so, a web blog is a very good thinking tool or cognitive tool. I use my web blog just to order my thoughts, to write an article for an audience, and I get feedback by people reading that web blog and commenting on it. Okay. So, now um, I Twitter that. Okay, I have a web blog, and a web blog is uninteresting if no one knows that web blog. So, I twittered the link, just a short message here. I have written a new article about my lectures uh, in the arithmetics lecture, about the videos, and I, 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 I wrote that down here in Twitter. And then, some days later, 
there was something happening. This is a tweet, a message in Twitter by Eisenmeet. Eisenmeet is the person in the world. I think I've never, uh, never met him personally, but he's the teacher, I think, of English, no, French, Spain, and history. And Eisenmeet, he did something here. He retweeted a tweet by Martin Kurz. Martin Kurz is also a teacher of physics, informatics, and uh, mathematics. And Martin Kurz presented uh, his tweet was about a link. And he said here, inverted classroom. Just put an inverted classroom and the link to text describing the concept of inverted classrooms. And Eisenmeet, he read that and he retweeted that, adding some information. He said, hey, this is was me, uh, I'm Dunkel Munkel on Twitter, okay? This is what Dunkel Munkel is doing in his lectures. So, I recognized that and I read the text which meant, okay, inverted classroom, we don't give the instruction in the classroom, or the old classroom is to give the instruction in the classroom when people doing homework after the classroom. Inverted classroom means you, you give the input before people meet, okay, and in the classroom you let people interact work problems. So this does interactive uh, uh, inverted classroom mean, and I did this with my lectures without knowing that this is the correct term. So people in my learning network gave me some hints to important concepts relevant there for my work. So I was reflecting again in my web blog about that and I said, oh, that, that's very good. New concept I've, I've heard of, inverted classroom, I'm exactly doing this. And I was writing a scientific article, putting that into that article. And then people commented again, and one person who commented was Matthias Heil. Matthias Heil is a teacher of English and religion, nothing to do with, with my scientific things, but he's also reading um, yeah, what I do. And he says the correct term in the US context is not inverted classroom, it is flipped classroom. And I've never heard of the concept flipped classroom, but this opened a bunch, a, a big um, field of links in the web and text just knowing that word. I've, never, I've not known that, but because I have written about that in my web blog, Matthias Heil could give me the tip, the hint, um, that this could be a relevant term for me. The flipped classroom and it was really very good and I also twittered about that. And then, then dumb people came and said, hey, have you seen the videos of Salman Khan who does exactly this? And I watched the video of Salman Khan and I said, and I saw, hey, he's really exactly doing this. He, he talked about the flipped classroom and they have never had so fast known about those videos if I have not heard about it. And Anja Lorenz uh, gave me a link to the flipped classroom and infographic via Twitter. I would have not yeah, known this graphic if I would not be Twittering perhaps. Okay, so many people in the learning network. Important for this is to have a network. You need many people in your network interacting with you, giving you information, things, commenting on your web work articles, for example. So, there are some, some, yeah, what to say, some rules how you should interact in the web that, um, yeah, that people are, uh, yeah, what to say, to, to stimulate your web, okay? And this is the Neuron metaphor by uh, Jean Pomater, which is highly criticized in Germany, but uh, I like it very much because it is not a descriptive model. It does not describe how communication works. 
It is a normative model. It says you should act like this, that your learning network is stimulated and communication takes place. So you should imagine that you are just a, a little neuron in a neural network and you are firing information. Okay? And you are firing information, you are open and transparent, just fire what you're thinking about. Don't think you make a mistake, just say it. The neurons share their knowledge immediately. If you, if you are thinking something or are reading something, just filter it. Just filter it. And people can yeah, connect to you via this information. If you are not twittering it, people will not know. Okay, if you are not afraid of making mistakes, just say it. If, if it's a fault mistake, someone would, will, will, will say, hey, this was a fault, and okay, everybody knows that. So, um, you must be aware of that you are part of a net, of a network, this is what net sensibility means, and or sensitivity perhaps better. And you should see that humans are resources, or they have resources. You have resources, you can share your resources with others in the web, and others could also share their resources with you. Okay, now well, having a look about uh, on what people are saying to my question. Neither Fuchs, which is a colleague uh, in Heidelberg, he says it doesn't seem to be a question of relevance, but concerning the web based strategy, more a question of infrastructure. Okay, problem you need good internet connection to always be online to do that network. Okay, that's true. <coughs> Okay, then Anja Lorenz is questioning why not access to international research outcomes facility for all research open discussions. Okay. Oh, Stefan Schröder is twittering in Portuguese and he says, I love Google Translate. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if this is really uh, good Portuguese and uh, can decide on your own. Okay, now second example is a lab notebook. Um, this is a wiki again, like Wikipedia, but um, this is Wikiversity. Wikiversity is a wiki you can use for scientific context, for university context. And I use my personal user web page there just to put information about what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, just notes like a lab notebook. If you're working in a lab and you have a notebook and you take notes, you do that in, you do that in paper. But I do that um, in the web. So there are many contents I'm writing about in, in the web. So journal, okay. I should say it. So here is a web page about process orientation, which I'm very interested in. And I just put some thoughts there, which are unsorted, just some thoughts about process orientation. Yeah, and everyone may participate by clicking on edit and can add information, ask questions, change the text, whatever. So I hope by this that other people will contribute. Oh, example two, example four. One example was I was asked or was I was invited to give a talk about how the teaching should be for university, universities for student teachers. What is a good teacher and how should he be taught before? And I did not really know what to tell in that talk. So I just wrote about that in my web blog, adding my ideas, telling yeah, what I will tell in that talk. And asked for help. What should I say? What is a good teacher? And here, 72 answers came of people, very long comments, adding information about what I should, um, what I should say about good teaching. And the result was my my uh, my task as 
research and scientists was to grab all the comments and then put them into a model. And this was the model I showed this talk. This is a collaborative product of collaboration. All the ideas that people gave me in that blog went what were added to that image. And afterwards, after the talk, I was reflecting the talk again in my web blog to inform all the people who have helped me to prepare it, just what has happened in the talk and was where, what was the discussion that thought. Then uh, the next example was um, Lutz Berger, this is a colleague in, in Heidelberg, and some students and people from the web, we did an expedition of education. Our idea was to drive 10 days through Germany and to film interesting persons, interesting school projects, just to report on them. And we did that, so we drove 10 days to Germany, we were in several countries, and we did that buildings expedition, so expedition of education, and we did the following. We, we made video interviews and pushed them to the web, and we were streaming them, uh, like this situation here, and people were commenting on Twitter, so we were interviewing a person, streaming them over the internet, and people asking questions over Twitter, and we could then ask that question really in real life to the person sitting in front of us. So really um, yeah, high interactivity. The last example is reflecting on my visit to Mozambique. I've been now here for, for yeah, 10 days, 10, 11 days. I was in Beira giving a workshop about scientific work, or working scientifically in uh, mathematics education and preparing master thesis. So, and here I, I, I've learned much in that course. So, for me it's important to write about that, just to deep think about what I have learned. So, I have uh, written, um, um, yeah, web blog article um, searching for a research question, just reflecting all the things the students did, the problems they have encountered, um, yeah, what I have learned or doing such a workshop, I have written there. And people already commented, for example here, Thomas Röke, he says, oh, very interesting, how you did that to let the students find a research question. And I'm very interested in how did this go on? What happened after that? Okay, I responded and got into interaction with them. Okay, now further ideas for open science with the web 2.0 is using video streaming and Twitter action in the presentation. See, Twittering, streaming, and Twittering connected to the people outside. Then another. Um, yeah, another idea is planning and writing articles in the wiki. If you write a research article, why do that um, yeah, just on your computer? Let others participate, adding ideas, asking, criticizing before publishing. Okay? If you write an article, you are publishing it. Scientists criticize after that. Let them criticize before you publish. Open seminars just by letting perhaps students using Twitter and web blogs like this and yeah, letting society participate by, um, yeah, by, by coming to the seminars via the web. Okay, and one other idea is I let students write about their research ideas in my web blog as guest articles. So they write about their research ideas and they can use my, my network of people who read my web blog, web blog and they get comments by the people who read my web blog. It's also very good just to have the research that's criticized as early as possible. So, there are some problems and criticisms about open science done in that way. And I will give a short one. One problem is 
Scientists say, I don't want to make mistakes in the open space. What happens if something is wrong? Okay. My answer is, someone else will see that and comment it. Okay? It is not, it is not bad to make mistakes. The opposite is true. It is good as scientist, as researcher, as teacher, to show that you don't have any problems to make a mistake. And that you are able to, to handle mistakes uh, yeah, um, critically. And, that, and you can, that, that it's okay to make a mistake and to, to say, okay, it was a mistake, and you are right. Yeah, and so you make a mistake in the web, some other one, other person corrects it, and all people now know that what can be wrong and what is the correct answer. Another idea, another criticism is I am frightened that my ideas will be stolen. What if I, 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 I write about a research idea, and another scientist takes that idea and he uses it? I would say, great. Okay? This is not bad that he uses it because don't think a scientist as a single person working in the field and trying to do the, the best research by yourself. I would say it's better to think in a scientific community and sharing ideas. And if someone else takes your idea and has some results, you can can use his or her results and do some new things with it. And so as a research community, you will be much faster if you share the ideas, not hide them. And by the way, if you write in your web blog about your research ideas, it is your idea. You have written about that, it is in the web, and there's date below it. So other scientists using that should cite you. Another criticism is I don't know what would happen. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid of uncertainty. But okay, this is life. It makes work much more interesting if things can happen you have not uh, expected. Okay, one serious problem is information overflow in time. Many people say they have not the time to do. It is true that if you are working in the web, it is often additional work. So you double your work if you work in the web, the virtual space, and the reality. And so you have to watch, uh, take care of you that, you, that you don't do too much in the web to, to be a healthy person. So there's a, a danger to, to to work too much. Another problem uh, I was facing is that people commenting in my web blog only said, great, do this. Great, very good. Okay, so this was not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to get criticism. I wanted to be criticized by those people. And they just said, yeah, great, I like this. Okay, so we need a culture of criticism in the web. Some people said, I, 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 I don't want you to criticize in the web. So other people can see that I criticize you. And I said, I want you to criticize in the, in the open space, that anyone can see that, um, yeah, that there may be criticism. And I think scientific culture must change. So, Many people, many scientists do not think that way. And for example, some PhD students ask me, may I put my ideas into the web? My professor does not allow this. So, okay. Then you can't do that. It's a really problem. If you are, if you are in some hierarchical structure and the professor says no, hide these ideas, it's important to hide them, you can't change that, but I hope that scientific culture will change um, when more people use that way of open science. 
Okay, thank you for your attention. And I hope we can have an open discussion perhaps with involving the people outside. Thank you very much. Okay, um, just say any some people say that the, that the stream was okay. But okay, yeah. A ciência é uma conquista da humanidade porque a ciência aberta é relevante para todos os cientistas, é claro. This was this was translated by Google Translate. Some of the of the Stefan Schuler just put this German text into Google Translate. So what did you what did you say? O outro estava a dizer que a partir de 16 e 5 conseguia ouvir tudo de bem, simplesmente não ouvia bem. Portanto, ele não estava bem posicionado na cama. Ok. Now, any questions? Oh, it, oh, should I translate something? Oh. No, it's, it's ok. It's ok. Yeah. Here, we will be saying thank you for your attention, Kashi, thank you very much. So, some people outside that are watching the presentation and commenting. So, some, and thank you again for all the people of the computer science department who made that work. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. And um, now, any questions? Ask, uh, okay, you might ask in Portuguese if you want. You, you can ask English, but you can also ask Portuguese and someone else will translate. Yeah, yeah. But yes, that one can speak. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, I am a student of the UP, I'm doing the first year of maths. Uh, I would like to, to understand something. Well, education is a developing process. Okay, the way I teach today won't be the way I teach tomorrow. Uh, and what about if uh, I, I record what I teach today and I put it on the website and tell my students to see it? Uh, by this way, should I be stopping the developing of education? Because I want to have an opportunity of giving a new example of developing the, uh, the teaching process by itself. Very good question. I repeat the microphone that the people outside can know what I need to ask. Okay. You said that education is uh, a developing process and if I put my videos on the web, I stop, I freeze that, that state and yeah, do, I, do, I, um, do I stop that developing process? Okay. So, um, this is true. Um, the, my, the videos I put on the web are perhaps 10 minutes long. I split up the lecture into 10 minutes parts which means every one of those parts can be reused if I want to or I say no, I don't want to use that one anymore I want to create a new one so this semester I, I use those videos but not all of them I say okay, these videos I will not use anymore because they are not relevant, I don't want to use them and again some new presentations will be recorded so we have a 90 minutes lecture and I say the first 15 minutes, I will give a new presentation piece recorded, and afterwards we will work on that problem. So I have a new record of the web. So you are right, you should do that always in mind that what you have recorded today, you will not use tomorrow. But you, you, are, you are able to use it if you want to. So this is just the possibility, not. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, my question is for uh, the area of the Let's say that we are uh, using web all the systems of communication. Means that, in fact, uh, what we are doing, in some way, uh, we will not need to be on the classroom to contact the student because you can use Skype. And one of the criticisms that people are saying that 
if you are using the only, I'm seeing only yeah, the computers and all the communication systems, uh, you are losing the body language yeah. that you find in the classroom, the interaction. Yeah. But when I'm seeing now using the sky, means that you can control that variable of body language. Or do you have other argument which can say that, let's say, if you use sky and you have all the people, you see them, they see you. Is the problem of body language finished? Is the interaction issue of physical presence yeah. eliminated? Okay, uh, I repeat the question again for the screen. Yeah, yeah. First question is um, that uh, if you work in the web, that um, what is often we criticize that body language is missing. And but with, with Skype or video conferencing, you also have the body language. So why should we meet? Uh, or is it still necessary to meet uh, body, the, the, the physical presence? And I would say it, it is, is necessary to meet. I don't know what it is. It is physical presence. It is the atmosphere of people sitting together. You know, as I, as I recall my lecture, this was on Tuesday morning, and on Tuesday afternoon it was in the web. And I thought, okay, it will last two, three or four weeks, and nobody will be on Tuesday morning because they can all watch the video on Tuesday afternoon. They were all there tomorrow in the morning. They were all in the lecture hall listening to the video, to the lecture, which has been recorded. So I think people like to, to go somewhere to, to meet others in reality and to work with them. You know, it's the same having, watching a movie on TV or going to the cinema. These are two completely different things. People have a TV at home, but they also go to the cinema because that atmosphere is so great. So I think perhaps those tools like videos in the world classroom offer us the possibility to change the things we do when we meet. So in the lectures, um, in the old days, <laughs> People, 300 people coming into a room just to listen. This is nonsense, okay? Today, to, to, to let 300 people come by bus, by car, just to listen. So, in this case, they listen at home and they come to work with each other and to, yeah, to solve problems together. And this is... That's the, what the, the, the question is. I agree with somebody. My question is, is the depth need of physical contact something that is in our genetic code or it's something that uh, you learn it and within five or six generations all the kids that are doing it on, on internet they are not going they are not going to need to be on physical contact is okay. it ah, okay the question is um, is this need for physical contact um, uh, in our genetic code or Will people in five or six centuries or generations uh, don't feel that anymore? I don't know. It. <laughs> I don't know. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Yes. Um, again, uh, I don't know if you comment. Maybe a dimension that I don't know, but my. Um, in my understanding, by you using this, what you call open science, you, you allow many views, many perspectives uh, in front of each issue. How do you deal with this? Um, are you allowing this to happen? Maybe you can have different views, different logics, or you do not accommodate this question. Uh, so, in other words, are you promoting many different ways of thinking or you are just allowed one way of thinking? Yeah. Okay. The question is if um, in my web of example, I allow many different views and different ways of thinking, or if I only allow one way of thinking and perhaps deleting all comments which are not my way of thinking. 
No, sure, I, I, I want different perspectives. I want to, to my work is a thinking tool in that way that I just try to, to write my thoughts, and this makes me think deeply about my thoughts, writing my thoughts. My, the articles are my thoughts, my perspective. But then someone comes and adds a comment which brings the completely new perspective to that thing. And I want that. that this is good. That, this is what, uh, because, uh, yeah, why am I doing that? I want to have different perspectives. I want to have criticisms. So, um, I want to, yeah, this is yeah, much a thing of my personal development and using that. I want to, to develop myself by thinking deeply, by writing, and by having feedback and integrating this feedback again in my thinking. Yeah. Okay. More questions? Okay, think about that. I'll have a look there. Ah, okay. Okay, the, the people just saying what has happened because the stream was bad for a moment. Okay, if you have no more questions. Yeah, ah, okay. Uh, not, not my equation uh, to the kind of economy. What, what I see might be tenuous after now, and require the use of open, open, open science can be in this tenuous. Well, it was a bit, it's the problem in that way that uh, technology is is no longer a question of do we need to go to it's just uh, we are going to uh, it's just uh, it's just that we are going to technology, we are using technology. And time after time the growth is, is such uh going into uh, high 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 thing. So for now I could see one of the comments there was made of infrastructures, if you would have infrastructures in Africa. In five, ten years I don't think that would anymore be a problem you know, of Facebook. So to us as teachers uh, looking into this for our our next generation for example, we could you see this open open science as a really a good tool, a very strong tool that eventually could could add more more and more value to, to our teaching, to, to our researches and to the sciences. Yeah. I, I think so. I don't the, the comment the comment was um, that infrastructure is a problem today, but surely not, not in more than five or ten years. So, open science will contribute much to Mozambican teaching and doing the way of research. I, I fully agree. And, um, yeah, in my vision, um, if you're doing open science that way, you also encourage people who are not working in science, perhaps teachers. To, to be scientists, to be researchers in their own field. So just to, to reflect on their teaching, to plan, to want to know something about a problem, they want to solve a problem, writing about that in the web blog, perhaps contacting to a scientist who gives an idea. And so uh, it would be great if all men could be researchers in some, yeah, some aspect. Okay, thank you very much. And I think Marcus Jennifer wants to say something. Então, se não há mais questões, penso que merece mais uma salva de palmas.
at the end, uh, you, you may be in contact with me and uh, join my learning network. I would like to join your learning network by connecting via this. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. My impression is that most of people are using, are using uh, instead of Twitter, yeah. are using Facebook. Yeah. Is that possible also to? Ah. Yeah. Okay. One question. Um, many people are using Facebook. Uh, what about Facebook? Okay, Facebook is also a tool which a uh, community which allows for open doing open science. Um, I'm not using Facebook because of some other reasons, because I don't know what they do with my data. So I am a little bit uh, I, uh, to say I don't I don't want to use it. So I'm not on Facebook, but I'm other I use other tools. But you could also use Facebook to do open science by like principle. Yeah.